The New York Knicks are going to have to make some tough calls when it comes to the roster in the preseason. And also, it seems as if Jericho Sims has had a breakout training camp where we could see him get a full-time role to a degree with the New York Knicks upcoming where he could actually see himself in the rotation. So welcome back to Knicks Digest, guys. My name is Chris, and we're going to jump right into it as we always do. This is another episode of Knicks News. And first things first, we are going to talk about the Knicks roster decisions. Now, the New York Knicks cannot keep everyone from their preseason roster. They are going to have to cut it down to 15 people and two two-way contracts. So some guys, such as Nathan Knight, Isaiah Roby, Charlie Brown Jr., Daquan Jeffries, and Ryan Archdiakono are going to be in situations where they could see themselves getting cut from the team and potentially going to the G League or maybe going overseas or getting a two-way deal. Who knows? But it does seem like Tom Thibodeau hates doing this. He actually said it was the worst part of the job. And let's take a look at a little quote that he had to say just when he was asked about this. He said it's going to be a tough call. Those guys have been here for a good chunk of the summer and fall and worked extremely hard. We'll see how it unfolds. We still have a little more time to go, but they've been terrific. Hopefully, we'll be able to keep some of those guys for our G League team. I like who they are. I like who, how they practice, and I like how they compete. Sorry. That's for later. Um, But, yes, yeah, so essentially, Tom Thibodeau is going to need to cut down this roster. This is mainly the job of a head coach. We are going to see who keeps their roster spot and who doesn't. I have a burning suspicion, and this is just completely my thought. Maybe there's something out about this that is going to completely contradict what I'm about to say. I do not think Isaiah Roby is going to make this roster. He did not look good in the summer league. And also, with Jericho Sims, which we are going to talk about in a few minutes, that mix of having Sims and also Roby's poor performance, I don't think he's going to make this roster. I don't think that Charlie Brown Jr. is going to make it also. I think he'll end up on the G League team. I do, however, think that Ryan Archdiakono is almost a lock for this New York Knicks roster because of the good impact that he'll have on this team when it comes to the locker room, when it comes to practices. He's been in the NBA for a little bit of time now. He's very close with multiple members of the team. He, before this season, has played with every single person on the current Knicks roster whether it was last season before he got traded for Josh Hart, but also because the only two guys added since Archdiakono got traded in that Josh Hart deal that the Knicks did not want to trade him in, mind you, are Dante DiVincenzo and Josh Hart, both teammates of Archdiakono at college. He knows them well. They're very close. The Knicks love their Nova Knicks connection. Leon Rose likes to keep it in the family. I do not think he's going to cut a Villanova guy. I just do not see that being a realistic thing to happen with all these other guys on the roster. It might mess with the chemistry, at least at first. They probably get over it because they understand it's a business and all. But at the same time, they would probably like to have someone who many, many of the players are friends with. Because let's be real about this 15th roster spot. You don't need to go out there and sign the best player you can find. They're never going to play. The... Did Theo Pinson ever play any meaningful minutes for the New York Knicks? No. Was he super important in his own way to the New York Knicks? Yes. Was he important to the Brooklyn Nets? Yes. Did he play for the Brooklyn Nets? Hardly. Did he really play too much with Dallas? No. We even saw him sometimes play power forward at six foot four. And I know Josh Hart's going to do that, but they're very different sized people, and they also play differently. And... Theo was helpful for the Magic, or for the Mavericks. Everyone liked him there. Arciak knows the same thing. It's the same thing, except he's got connections with these guys, and he's not going to get sturdy on the sideline. Or maybe he will. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, jo maybe Josh Hart is going to just absolutely corrupt Ryan Arciak now, and Archie's going to be getting sturdy on the sidelines when the Knicks are up 20 against literally any team in the NBA because they're the best team ever. But to be serious... I do think that the only thing that we know for sure is that Arciakano is going to be making this Knicks roster. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he won't. They gave him that Exhibit 9 deal, so I believe he will end up in the G League if he does not make this team. But if he does, he'll get like $2.5 million, which is a little more than I think they'd pay most guys if they made the roster because Arciakano has been in the NBA longer than most other players who are being considered such as guys like Charlie Brown or Nathan Knight. And Charlie Brown spent zero time in the NBA, and Nathan Knight spent a little bit on the Timberwolves. 
And that's about it. I think we'll see a lot of these guys end up in the G League. I have no idea what's going to happen with Isaiah Roby. I just don't think he's going to be on the roster. And the reason for that is because of Jericho Sims. Could he be breaking out? Now, I use the phrase breaking out very lightly. And here is why I do not think we're about to see Jericho Sims go out there and average 20 and 10. Though that would be really cool because that it just would be. I mean, who doesn't want another 20-10 player on their team? But obviously, that's not exactly what we're seeing when it comes to breakouts. Jericho Sims hardly played in his rookie year. And then this previous season, he played a little more. He was experimented at power forward, which I thought was sort of weird considering he has no semblance of a jump shot. But it is what it is. It feels like it's situational. And that appears what it's going to look like again for Jericho Sims. Because what Tom Thibodeau really mentioned is that if they're going to go small... They're going to have Josh Hart play that back up four. And if they're going to go big, they're going to have Jericho Sims there. With the lack of a true backup power forward and the fact that the only true power forward on the New York Knicks is Julius Randle, there are going to be times where Randle's not on the court. They're going to be rare because Randle plays a ton of minutes, but maybe with the injury that he recently had over the, or over the playoffs that he rehabbed over the offseason... We could see him ramp back a little bit, which I, for one, would not mind at all. I think Julius Randle has played way too much over these past two years, and the Knicks are going to run him right into a wall if he does not slow down. He should be playing less minutes, especially earlier on in the season. He's coming off that ankle thing. I think it's very important that he gets a good amount of rest and that they mix this well. But, yeah, so it seems like Jericho Sims has been working. It's And for Tom Thibodeau to go out there... And explain this in training camp when he rarely ever talks about who's playing well in training camp is huge. It means Jericho Sims is awesome. It means he's playing tremendous basketball. Because when you look at it, he sort of is that Tom Thibodeau player. He's not exactly the tallest guy. He's six foot nine, and he's more of a center than anything else, but he can play power forward. It's the vertical that he has, it's the strength that he has, it's the defensive awareness, and it's also the fact that he is such a hard worker, it appears. And I think all of those things are just going to make Tibbs want to give this guy a chance. Give him more time as the situational backup power forward with Josh Hart, depending on lineups. For instance, if you're playing a team like the Los Angeles Lakers, who are very big, or the Memphis Grizzlies, who run two bigs, then we'll see a lot of Jericho Sims. Or the Cleveland Cavaliers, who we're now sort of rivals with, with Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. If Mobley and Allen are there together and Randall comes off, it would make sense for Tibbs, or for Sims to come on. Tibbs should not be playing basketball. He's in his 60s and also, you know, you know what he looks like. Um, But yes, so what we have here is essentially that we could see Jericho Sims actually have a lot more production this year. I'm curious if he's ever going to start shooting jump shots. It's one of those things where it feels like the answer is no. However, you never know how things work. Al Horford is around the same height. He used to never shoot jump shots, but he did shoot mid-range shots, and Jericho Sims does not. Also, Jericho Sims looks like a deer in headlights when he goes to the free throw line. So I'm not going to say that Jericho Sims is going to come back as a stretch four. I highly doubt he's going to shoot any threes, but maybe he'll expand that range a little bit, have a, have somewhat of a mid-range game on top of that high-energy play that he gives around the rim. And that is all that we have to talk about for today, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm a little sick. I'm sorry if this video, if I seem sort of suppressed or anything. I'm just tired. My throat hurts. I'm not really in the best headspace at the moment when it comes to just how I feel physically. But thank you so much for tuning in and make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Get us in that algorithm, boys. And then this season is starting tonight. I don't know if this video is going to drop tonight. So the Knicks may have already played. I might be putting this out tomorrow. We're not sure yet. However, preseason begins tonight. The New York Knicks will be playing basketball once again. And though it's preseason, it's a little different. It's not as fun. It means the NBA season is right around the corner. I'm obviously filming this on Monday, October 9th, which means it is around one week, a little or a little over two weeks, excuse me, until we get real regular season New York Knicks basketball that counts towards the records. The weather is getting colder. The New York Knicks are coming back, and this is going to be great. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want a ton of great new content. Dariel recently made his debut for the channel. It was an awesome video. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to check out Troy's video on Zion, because that is an awesome one. It's doing great numbers right now. It's a tremendous video. And then just make sure to check out all the rest of the videos, guys, because I think it's a great channel, personally, and maybe I'm biased. 
but I don't think so. So have a great day, guys. And always remember, look at my wall because I'm not wearing a New York Knicks shirt right now. Remember, go Knicks.